Thank God you got the coordinates! In the previous episodes, it was mentioned that Sarah followed Morgan to the submarine, and later, Luciana, Daniel, and others also transferred to the submarine. However, Althea, alone, left and returned to her armored vehicle, although the nuclear explosion did not destroy it. The vehicle had no fuel and couldn't move. At this point, a voice from the military organization came over the radio. Due to intermittent radiation interference, Althea had to find a better location to see if she could receive the signal. This is crucial for the safety of her girlfriend because, during the initial nuclear launch, Althea had her girlfriend pilot a helicopter to rescue Daniel and others. After everyone was safe, Isabel chose to leave on her own to avoid the organization's pursuit, as deserting one's post would surely result in being hunted. Now, Upon receiving the mysterious military organization's message, Althea is particularly concerned. However, Morgan arrives at the armored vehicle a few minutes after Althea leaves. Worried about her safety, there are leftover food and a camera indicating that she hasn't gone far. Morgan checks the surroundings but doesn't find her. Meanwhile, Althea has picked up a conversation on the radio channel. The gist is that a retrieval team will search for Team 17, and they will land in two minutes. Team 17 is Isabel's number and the recovery team is responsible for eliminating and recovering them. Suddenly, the sound of a helicopter fills the sky. Arriving sooner than expected, Althea rushes into an abandoned small house nearby. As the helicopter is heading towards the armored vehicle, this is not good. Althea ran quickly towards the armored car. She couldn't let the recycling team get the camera, otherwise all the people inside might die. As Althea approaches the vehicle, voices can be heard inside. Althea accelerated and hid under the car. When they were far away, Althea went back to the car, but the camera had disappeared. She was desperate. Suddenly, a noise on the roof catches her attention, but upon closer inspection, it seems to be an illusion. As Althea turned around, a figure tackled her to the ground. The assailant was none other than Morgan, who, upon hearing Althea's voice, finally relaxed. Althea, puzzled, couldn't understand why Morgan was there. Morgan also explained why he was here. Althea didn't join the others on the submarine, and Morgan couldn't rest easy, so he went out searching for her. Althea quickly said, We can't stay here, they'll come back. Morgan suggested, Then let's go meet up with Grace. She's out with me looking for you. Although Morgan was eager to know who piloted the helicopter, Althea remained unwilling to disclose that information. She simply stated, Staying here is a death sentence. They immediately set off towards the rendezvous point with Grace, just as they arrive. Gunshots ring out. It must have been the two mysterious men. Morgan and Althea had to swiftly navigate through abandoned vehicles, taking a moment behind one to rest and removing their masks to get a clear view of the enemies, even if it meant risking exposure to radiation dust. Morgan continued questioning Althea about the identities and motives of their pursuers. Althea revealed that they were part of a highly secretive organization. The two individuals were part of a retrieval team with the mission of eliminating all evidence of their existence, including anyone who knew about them. Before she could finish, they had to resume their escape, finding a momentarily safer spot. Morgan pressed Althea for more details. Althea replied they were looking for my girlfriend because she went AWOL to rescue Daniel and the others. She's in hiding and I don't know where she is. Realizing that evading capture was not a sustainable solution, Morgan took out a radio and urged Grace to hurry to their location. Three minutes later, a vehicle sped towards them, and Grace arrived. Get in! However, Althea hesitated to get on board, not wanting to burden Morgan, yet... Morgan, never one to shy away from trouble, encouraged Althea, insisting they face the challenges together. They quickly boarded the vehicle and, amidst a hail of bullets, left the area. After covering some distance, the vehicle ran out of gas, likely from a hit to the fuel tank earlier. Now, they had to do their best to conceal the vehicle and avoid detection. When Althea initially left the dam, Grace was still pregnant, naturally. Althea had heard about the tragic loss of Grace's child and expressed her sincere condolences, offering heartfelt comfort to Grace. Morgan shared that Rachel hadn't survived either, and now they were the parents of little Morgan. Althea felt that they shouldn't involve themselves in this dangerous situation, especially considering the responsibility of caring for a child. However, Morgan insisted they face it together, even if it meant eliminating the retrieval team. Grace, too, stood firm expressing her willingness to stand by Morgan, because she knew that if it wasn't for Althea and John, it wouldn't have been for Morgan. Althea doesn't say no anymore. 
She says, my armored car can take them out. There's fuel and ammo in the recovery team's helicopter. I'll draw them away. You get the fuel and ammo. And then Althea threw the keys to Morgan. I'll lure them out into the open and then you drive up and shoot them. She continued. They agreed to stay in contact on Channel 4. Soon, Morgan and Grace arrived at the helicopter. And the retrieval team was not present inside the aircraft. Morgan checked and confirmed there was sufficient fuel. But Grace couldn't find any ammunition. Morgan immediately contacted Althea. Informing her of the situation. In fact, Althea had known all along that small helicopters wouldn't be equipped with weapons. She deliberately made Morgan leave. She wanted to face the situation alone. Morgan and Grace also had to take care of little Morgan. Althea assured Morgan that she had found a way to deal with the retrieval team. Despite Morgan's persistent inquiries about her current location, Althea abruptly cut off communication and instead contacted the retrieval team's channel. Althea said, The people outside saw nothing. They are completely unaware of you, but I know who you are looking for, and I have your maps and flight plans. I can return everything, bring my camera to the old house to the west for the exchange. See you in three hours. Althea had found a formidable weapon to deal with the retrieval team. Meanwhile, Morgan and Grace had not left. They were preparing to ambush the retrieval team from within the armored vehicle. Two hours later Althea starts talking herself through the negotiation scenario in advance. She wants to see if the cannon really works. The test subject, naturally, was a nearby zombie. The results were apparent the firepower was more than sufficient. Even using stones as makeshift ammunition for now. With everything ready, Althea wondered why the retrieval team hadn't arrived. However, the radio response came. We won't be coming over. You can negotiate with yourself slowly. They had already captured Morgan and Grace. They are the most mysterious military organization in the post-apocalyptic world. The recycling team aimed their guns at Morgan and Grace's necks, attempting to force them to reveal the location of Team 17. We have a daughter. They're not a part of the thing. She needs us. Althea spoke over the radio, saying, I won't tell you anything if you kill them. You have to release them first. However, the recycling team had their own principles and were not willing to negotiate with Althea. They decided to kill Morgan first and began the countdown. Grace was extremely nervous. And when they reached the count of three, Althea finally spoke up, claiming that she knew where Team 17 was located. Morgan survived. Grace is also breathing heavily from the shock. Althea said that Team 17 had gone to a cabin in the Misty Mountains and that I could take you there. And when you found it, you could kill me. But for now, you had to let Morgan and the others go. The recycling team has its own code of conduct. They won't waste time arguing with Althea here. They're ready to eliminate Morgan and Grace first before searching for Team 17. Everyone with knowledge of the situation must die. Just as the man was about to pull the trigger Morgan yanked on the gun and then turned on its safety, Grace follows suit. Landing a kick on one of the men, Morgan picks up his gun and aims at another, commanding him to release Grace. Seeing the two unfazed. One. The recycling team had to give in and put the gun on the ground. Grace had just escaped when the man attacked Morgan. Morgan was pinned to the ground and punched hard. Grace manages to reach the armored vehicle, immediately contacting Althea. Althea instructs Grace to lead them to the ranch if possible. Due to the two grappling with each other, his teammates on the side refrained from opening fire. Fearing the risk of accidental injuries, Grace came crashing down in her armored car. In a critical moment, they separate to avoid being run over. Morgan also climbs onto the vehicle. Grace accelerates towards the ranch. The armored car wasn't afraid of the recycling team's gunfire, so they had to watch it leave. As night falls, with only a five-minute distance from Althea's location, Morgan's battered face shows the aftermath of the beating. Suddenly, the sound of a helicopter fills the air. Morgan saw that the retrieval team had caught up. They were now directly above the armored vehicle. Morgan quickly informed Althea of the situation. Due to the short distance, Althea naturally spotted the helicopter in the sky. The helicopter then surpassed them and flew towards the front. Grace thought they had given up the pursuit, but Morgan believed they were planning to land ahead to reach the ranch before them. Grace had no choice but to accelerate. Althea had already prepared the cannon, securing the fuse to herself as rehearsed. Three zombies came out of the woods and Althea was about to pull out her weapon when shots rang out and the zombies fell. The retrieval team had arrived. Morgan and Grace reached the scene just in time, and Althea climbed directly onto the armored vehicle. This conveniently concealed the cannon behind the vehicle, keeping her out of the attack range. Althelia told them that once the retrieval team approached the armored car, 
They drove it away on her orders, watching the retrieval team approach but not yet within the attack range. They had no choice but to wait. Unexpectedly, a zombie approached the cannon. They prayed it wouldn't be damaged, but the zombie walked directly toward the fuse, knocking it to the ground. Yeah. Althea said to Morgan, I'll stall, you fix the fuse. The retrieval team had reached the side of the armored vehicle, but they couldn't see the cannon due to the car blocking their view. As they approached, the armored vehicle's weapons targeted them. Inside the vehicle, Althea warned them that any movement would turn them into Swiss cheese. The retrieval team knew the vehicle was out of bullets, and Althea was bluffing. They ordered Althea to surrender, and they opened fire on the vehicle. Althea, reluctantly, stated she had evidence proving she knew the location of Team 17. On her videotape, she pleaded not to be shot and proposed negotiating. Althea's goal was to buy time for Morgan. Carefully, she opened the car door, hands raised, holding the videotape in front of them. Meanwhile, Morgan had repaired the fuse, and Grace silently took her place in the driver's seat, ready to speed away upon a signal. The retrieval team urged Althea to hand over the videotape, but Althea insisted they let them leave first. Grace's hand was already on the ignition key, and Morgan was prepared for any threat. They exchanged glances, ready to strike Althea down, ignoring her plea. Grace, no! The gravel just rips them to pieces. They were perfectly matched for this operation. Althea may look quiet, but she's got a crazy gene in her bones. They quickly drove away in the armored vehicle. Morgan's purpose in coming out this time was to bring Althea back to the submarine. However, Althea expressed that she had to leave. She wasn't suited for communal living, and collecting stories was her mission. Morgan made a request, before she left. Could she leave behind an interview, perhaps as a farewell since they might never see each other again? During the interview, Morgan raised a question. If she knew the location of her girlfriend, why didn't she go find her? Althea said that Isabel, in the past, staunchly supported the organization's cause, but she gave up everything for Althea. When Althea asked her to rescue Luciana, going AWOL in their organization was a significant offense. Isabel suggested hiding away together to live a life for just the two of them, but Althea couldn't let go of her camera. She needed to continuously seek out stories and couldn't become part of one. Feeling she let her girlfriend down, Althea left. Morgan wanted to ask more, but Althea didn't want to talk anymore. She handed the tape to Morgan as a keepsake. After bidding farewell with hugs, Althea left to seek stories. She returned to the ranch, an organization that is also part of the story. Surprisingly, she found something on the corpses. Unexpectedly, Morgan returned. Morgan said, at that time, I alienated myself from the crowd and went it alone. You and John insisted on finding me despite my objections. You changed my perspective and traveled with me all the way. I'm doing what you did. At this moment, the radio on the corpse began making intermittent sounds. They could only hear it clearly when inside the helicopter. The organization was calling the retrieval team. Althea plucked up the courage to pick up the walkie-talkie and impersonate them. The organization stated that they had now identified the coordinates of Team 17's helicopter and instructed the retrieval team to proceed immediately and eliminate Team 17. Althea couldn't help but worry that the organization wouldn't spare Team 17. Nevertheless, she replied to the organization, stating that she would go there immediately. Morgan tried to convince her not to pursue meaningless stories. If the retrieval team didn't return promptly, they would send more people. Morgan urged Althea not to pretend to be an independent. Cold camera. You keep thinking you're outside the story, but you're always part of it. After listening to Morgan, Althea seemed to comprehend something. Indeed, the meaning of life lies in writing stories. Everyone encountered is a part of their story, and she should cherish that. Why persist with the camera? Having this realization, Morgan encouraged Althea to go find her loved one. All along Morgan has been hailed as a saint, but it's not bad to have a teammate like him his spirit has been an influence on many. After some twists and turns, Althea finally reached her destination. Inside the cabin, her recorded video was still playing. Althea is finally reunited with the love of her life and she shares about the organization, telling Isabel that she's figured it out. She even smashed her own camera symbolizing her willingness to give up everything for her loved one. This is the most exciting story of life.